So I'm very happy to be here uh, with you, Ken. Uh, thank you for welcoming us here in, at your offices and thank you for making yourself available. This series of the CEO talks are super important for us because we want to inspire our customers. We want to let them know that there are people that are really putting a lot of importance into this matter of creating a great culture, being really a trustable leader, somebody that can really open the door and, 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 and welcome the team as, as a team of, of people or, or uh, a family team. So it's definitely something that we want to spread the message all around. So, and definitely, again, it's important to say a big, big uh, message from all the Great Place to Work team to you. A big congratulations message because being the first one in Asia, it's something really amazing. Being in our worldwide list, it's something amazing. So again, thank you for welcoming us and, and thank you for having this time with, with us. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thank so we really are uh, questioning ourselves in a man of your position uh, driving this organization with such diversity and in so many different geographic locations. How do you uh, face these challenges and, and make the organizational culture work? You know, um, I strongly believe that an employees in a company with a strong organizational culture uh, will experience a sense of belonging, mm. um, engagement and commitment towards the organization and that is critical to the success of our business. You know, Take DHL Express for example, you know, we are the most international company in the world and we promise to deliver packages from one point to another within an agreed time frame. You know, to fulfill that promise, uh, we introduce a set of uh, global standards and um, process uh, to take care of our shipments from one place to another, executed by our 100,000 employees in the network um, in more than 220 countries and territories. That's well, what I mean. You know? Yeah, there you go. You know, it is not possible for me to um, follow every courier or every customer service agent around. And it is the culture that shapes the way they interact with each other at the workplace mm -hmm. and how they interact with our customers every day. Mm -hmm. you know, we put tremendous effort um, in cultivating a culture of um, empowerment and engagement. Uh, with the principles of um, respect and results to guide our actions and decisions. You know, we um, treat um, every employee with the utmost respect without compromising the highest standards of results. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, we made it very clear what their responsibilities are, what their accountabilities are, mm -hmm. so that they have the ownership to come up with the right mm -hmm. solutions and the right ideas to deliver the desired results. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you put the right culture in place, you know, our, for us, um, diversity and variety can actually be a strength. You know, we bring people together from a very diverse culture background. Uh, they view um, tasks from uh, different viewpoints. And with differing skills and experience, uh, they can often come up with solutions that are far more comprehensive, innovative and um, efficient. And that's amazing. And we yes. can see that and not only in the, in the positioning that you have in the market, but as well as we are talking about today, how strong the culture it is. And great place to work works around trust. And we can see that across all the, the measurements and assessments that we do. DHL is outstanding, number one in Asia, in, in our worldwide top uh, companies list. So it's, it's really outstanding. Thank you. But then, when you have to adjust uh, and change the company's culture for whatever challenge is in the market, or and you need to adapt the working style, uh, how do you ensure this change will apply and fit well culturally, whether it's Hong Kong office, Singapore office, Japan office, and all this? Uh, if you may share with us a little bit of the policies about implementing changes. You know, whenever there's a need to change or adjust, uh, I'll first uh, discuss my initial concepts with my direct reports, mm. um, my regional management team. Mm. Mm. You know, this group of people consists not just of my functional heads, but also my country managers, mm. which is already a very diverse team. Mm. Uh, my Japan country manager is a Japanese, my India country manager is an Indian. You know, and we hold management meeting uh, behind closed doors. Uh, when everyone is um, encouraged and expected to speak up. Mm -hmm. you know, my country managers are know their respective local teams, um, customers and stakeholders 
better than I do. So they are in a better position to advise me uh, what work and what to not. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, um, I strongly believe uh, that the strength of a team comes from a unity. Is um, um, unity. So when you um, when we open the door and come out of this management meeting, uh, whether it is my own idea or someone's idea that we have agreed upon. We all work together towards that one idea and all focus on the execution. Mm. You know, that way my country managers feel trusted and engaged as they also play a part in contributing to the idea. And in turn, they are responsible and accountable for the necessary changes. Mm. This also reflects uh, the essence of our respect and result culture. Mm. Mm. You know, and, 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 and it's been working fine so far. No, definitely. And respect is a very key element on building trust, Thanks. right? Because then the people feel considered, valuable, they can contribute, they can definitely be part of, of their success. Yes. Can you share with us an example of how you work with someone who resists change? How do you manage either the person or the situation? Because I'm pretty sure you, you faced that many, many times, Ken. Well, I. I do have a few examples, but I I rather don't not spot go, on anybody. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, exactly. I I rather not go into the details of any specific one. Uh, but instead, uh, I would like to say that in such a situation, um, the there's no more effective way than an open and honest dialogue with the staff mm -hmm. uh, who resist. You know, um, when you have that chance to explain to him or her. The rationale behind the change. Mm. As more often than not, um, it boils down to the staff's lack of understanding of the need to change. Mm. In his or her mind, is um, we're doing it this way all this while and it's working fine. Why do we need to change? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly, you that's know, a typical. So the, the dialogue also allows the staff um, to um, express his viewpoints and opinions uh, on the change and also a chance for us, for myself, to reflect if there is some adjustments needed uh, on implementation. Mm -hmm. So when you allow um, uh, the person um, to be engaged in the change process, uh, there will be less resistance and more barring and um, they're probably more uh, willing to accept the change in the end. Yeah, again, the respect is super important yes. for that. Thank you. That's super interesting. Can you share with us something that you think is uniquely different at DHL Express? And this uniqueness helps to create this wonderful workplace culture that you have? Uh, definitely. In DHL Express, um, I think our uniqueness comes uh, from um, our strong focus on our people. You mm. know, we build strategy around motivated people as we strongly believe the uh, employee's motivation directly impacts um, our service quality, our customer satisfaction and loyalty that drives business success. Yeah. You know, our certified international specialist or what we call the CIS yeah. training program mm -hmm. you know, um, is a very strong um, uh, example of our effort uh, in engaging and developing our people. You know, um, what, 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 what does this CIS uh, uh, training program mm. um, do? Uh, it actually ensures that every employee in our network speaks the same language mm -hmm. and share the same DHL values. Mm. You mm. Know? The CIS Foundation course um, actually introduced uh, all our employees to the fundamentals of international shipping, the history of our company, and also the strategy of our company. Mm. You know? Additional modules um, offers deep dives into more specialized areas like um, customs clearance and product knowledge. Mm. You know, and, and, and even better still is all these courses are actually facilitated by our own DHL Express executives and managers. And that's a key critical success factor of the program. So besides uh, people development, you know, uh, we also uh, put strong um, focus on employee appreciation and recognition. Mm -hmm. Every year we uh, conduct uh, various initiatives like um, what we call the uh, Staff Appreciation Week uh, when fun activities are held to um, recognize and reward frontline people. 
uh, we have the um, Employee of the Year event when we uh, reward and recognize our superstars who best demonstrated our DHL core values. Mm -hmm. And then we have the um, annual Asia Cup soccer and cheerleading competition mm -hmm. where we actually bring in teams from countries across the region wow. into one place. Oh wow. And uh, in the most recent two years, uh, we uh, introduced what we call the DHL Got Heart program. Uh, to reward those who have devoted uh, their time outside the working hours to charitable causes. So um, we hold our management um, responsible and accountable to whether people are happy working here. Mm -hmm. We have this annual um, employee opinion survey mm. uh, which gets translated into improvement action plans which we regularly communicate and share with the teams. The aim is um, to listen to our employees and work with them uh, to continuously improve our um, workplace and environment. No, we, we are like a big family. Yeah, yeah. You know, so um, when people feel a sense of belonging, uh, engaged, uh, they are more likely to uh, give their very best. Let me tell you, I can see that. Thank you. So you know that our business is going around having interviews uh, with a lot of companies. We get to know how the culture is implemented everywhere. I have to tell you, and I, I need you to know today, that every time I bump into one of your people in the MTR, coming up in the lift, and I look at them and I feel f uh, proud somehow, right? Because I know how, how interesting company you have, how nice culture. And I always think how challenging it is to get these people that are on the road, actually, every single day. How do you get them to be excited, engaged, motivated? And you, I think you said a, a key word. You said we're a big family. We are. And, and let me tell you, Ken, there's a lot of companies that they use the phrase, but they do not enact it okay. properly all the way, right? And when, when we receive the submission of the culture audit of DHL, it's something, it's a delightful moment because it's amazing to open that box and see all these things that you submit as evidence. It, you know, it's, 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 in, it's interesting that you say that because I, I, you know, if you walk into a company, um, you can't fake this stuff. Uh -huh. You know, you uh -huh. either feel it there or you go. don't. So you walk in, talk to the people, you know, um, and, and you genuinely manage it from the bottom of the heart and, and you genuinely uh, practice it. Um, um, people can feel it and um, customers walking to your company, yourself included, uh, can feel that it's all in the air. It's, it's something that I say that um, you almost impossible to fake it. Um, yeah. But let me tell you one story really quick. We were opening this box with all this evidence that you do, and, and we open a little package, and there's this uh, baby's pyjama. <laughs> and we were like, whoa, this is amazing. This is really outstanding. This is really extending your arms to say we are family. Yes, and, and we welcome every member of it, even it's a future employee Thank probably, you. right? So that's something that goes beyond. Thank you. Th that's the only way. How about this situation where you have to uh, balance the, the global culture with the local culture and, and you have to be a translator of that, right? How do you do that? Um, cannot agree more that um, it's always a challenge to maintain um, the balance of um, global and local needs. And now, so my um, Guiding principle to my management team here is to support, not direct, enable, not regulate, add value, not more work. Ultimately, battles are won at the front line in the countries. So at the global or regional office, uh, we value add by enabling our staff with the proper support, tools and uh, training. Mm. Uh, and then we set very clear responsibilities uh, and hold them firmly accountable and then let them get on with the job. Mm. You know, um, I strongly believe that if, if, if you're going to practice um, people empowerment, uh, you must have that strong trust element instilled. You know, as I always say, never doubt 
uh, the person you use, never use the person you doubt. Mm. You know, mm. when people are enabled and uh, feel empowered, they are truly motivated, and that's where they will put their heart and soul to deliver the desired results that you want out of them. Mm. You know? Yeah, and that is a huge challenge. It's a worldwide challenge. Yeah, okay. So, following this. Can you tell us uh, how Great Place to Work has been helping with this, this uh, super important mission of delivering such a culture? Well, thank you very much, um, um, Great Place to Work. You know, what, what you've done is that you provided us with an external platform uh, to assess ourselves you know, um, through the employee survey and the certification program. You know, um, we also um, took this opportunity opportunity to um, do self-reflection and see if any um, adjustment uh, we need to do internally to continuously um, improve our workplace and environment um, for our employees in the network. You know, I, I, uh, I'm really honored uh, um, that um, we've been recognized the uh, leading employer and um, and recognized as the best place uh, in Asia Pacific this year. You know, it is a very, very big encouragement for the managers and employees. You know, um, we do not just want to um, make DHL the best place to work. Uh, we really, really want to um, show the world DHL at its best. Yeah. So I really want to say again, thank you very much to Great Place well, to Work for your um, strong recognition. But Ken, definitely is not our work, it's yours. Uh, what we do is just be the witness of great cultures, great leaders like you, great teams that are really enacting and, and getting themselves into the culture and making it happen for real. Like you just said, uh, we're not faking it. Thank we, you. Are, we are definitely making it. So I'm very, very happy to have this time with you. I hope uh, we can see you more every now and then because you're inspiring a lot of leaders and a lot of teams around. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank All you, right. Ken. Thanks. Really.